opinion. So then I got this confidence. I said, I quit. I told my, I'm not going to practice general. So I would send back, even if the child had a cold and cough, I could have written, they said, doctor, write a prescription. No, way. I said, no, that's that doctor's job. He has had confidence and faith in me that I'll only do so much. And that paid a big dividend. I think my colleagues my, had a lot of faith in me. I will not take their patient away. I will not. And second principle, very strongly, I believe, I would not take A's child and give it to, because B, pediatrician is my friend. Even though they're living in the vicinity of the child, very good in their job. I said, that's not my job. But A is sent, I said, send back to A. You know, for, even if they, because they have faith in, why should I, who am I, you know, to... The question, who am I, is a big philosophical question. All of us have to answer even today. Who am I and what am I here for? Is a philosophy of life, which is, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I would, so that built in a lot of goodwill for me. There were very, very wonderful colleagues of mine of my time who, the minute they would see somebody, they would send them to me. So it gave me an opportunity to study them. And then I went back again every time. I would go for, I never left for a long time. I never studied in the US, but I would go and get a program or see and could have the capability of understanding a lot of our own culture and adapting that program to our culture. And that I was, I mean, that was my USB, I think. Oh. That I never copied everything. I think our culture is different. How do I do this with our parents? So many techniques they use in the West successfully, I feel, is not good for India. We're not geared to be like that. And why not? Can you, yeah. can you give but an example, doctor, like one example of some cultural difference? Between I, I, I tell you when I, now we talk about this early intervention, you know, the, the uh, I mean, how you early, you know, in your own culture, every child rearing practices is an intervention. Now, now today, Let's I'll tell you, okay, the brain development talks about that the child is born only with, you know, it's a good brain, which is capable of learning, but hearing, vision, you know, they, it has smell and touch. So it that is a major, and, you know, and they talk about what's called attachment bonding offer. In our culture, you know, mother who delivers a baby in, is given off from everything to be with the kid for the first 40 days or 50 days, they, they don't even allow her to come inside because she, I think, just bonds with the baby. Breastfeed, sleeps, and it's an amazing thing. I said, why do we give this up? Now, for example, they put, you know, this, I don't know, they, they put a, a bangles, you know, red and black, and it's nothing but the child's visual stimulation. You put an anklet for a child. It moves his leg at three, four months, ta 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 it's called the cause and effect. I told the West, what we know 5,000 years ago, you are calling it, uh, it's like taking a, this thing for turmeric, you know, patency. I said, mm -hmm. we know all this. And all those songs we sing, Taramaya, and it's nothing but building social interaction with your child. So I would tell my parents, please do all these things with your kids, you know, for a... You know, they do this Anna Prasanam, you know, when the child is around, when it's ready to chew, they have a ceremony, and I'm sure, you know, where we start. What is the ceremony telling you now your child can eat solid food? It can chew. If the, the pair, they would be worried if the child doesn't eat something is wrong, it's not chewing. Amazingly, for now, what audio metries you're talking about? You know, they, the, the, I remember in Tamil Nadu, we say, Sanja Dhamma. You know, the minute you sing, yeah. see the intonation pattern, we sing it in the same way. Everybody says it. The minute you say it, the child starts, you know, moving, saying, I know what you want me to do in that gestural vase. Now, I said, this is like an audiometer for you. In a village where you don't have hearing, if your child does this by saying, it can hear. But that's why it's following your so-called. So I did lots of these kind of practices with my parents using our child development strategies you know in the vijay dashmi they make you 
put a, you know, they make a child first write, you know, around two, three, it's a wonderful fine motor skills, you know, you're writing on a, you know, they would put rice or in different viragi or whatever, you know, they, they or a, you, know, you don't use a slate, we just write on that, you know, the child is ready to school, Kapri. they say, yeah, now he's ready or she's ready to go to school. So I think I understood and brought in a lot of our child rearing practices into the system. So the parents could relate perhaps to what I was trying to say. I said, these are very, it's ingrained. If a child doesn't do all this, something is wrong. Get it to understand. And then came assessments and, you know, I learned a lot from the West, which I, I, I must say even today and, uh, and uh, the advanced child psychiatry and, you know, all, all that is different ball game. But I'm just talking about how I got into this practice. Then I had more and more uh, people believing in me and they found it easier you see when you identify uh, with something which is totally new to you then you say okay let me practice i'm not doing it. i said granny also do it father also do it and you know be bond with the kid and you know practice play with them and you know so which i think uh, was uh, good the i also find found very difficult in our culture is uh, by nature we are very authoritarian. We won't follow what the older people say. You do this. You we don't. The currently uh, one of the reasons why our mental health, I think, is in in shambles because a lot of them have. They say highest country is mental disorders is because we are not allowing our children to express their emotions when they are young. We just you know brush it aside and say no, do that and say you know we don't allow them. No, that's not the way. You know, we are very authoritarian. Do this, don't do this. Come here, sit here. That we have to do away with. We have to change these practices. It's happening slowly, but it's, uh, it's so there are faults also in our system. I mean, I mean the, this thing is you know it was so geared towards what the older people say that you have to do what they you cannot rebel <laughs> elder yeah. this was also very difficult for me you know so slowly i told the parents it's okay now because they see even today the autism mothers many young mothers will say by one and a half two years i know something is wrong with my child it's not making look at me it's not speaking but the older elders in my house said nothing is running around beautifully your child is looking well you just want to make a fuss wait and watch this wait and watch is a very bad thing. Because we, as I told you, we have to do everything in the first thousand days. So there are plus points and negative points. I think uh, the plus point is what I used it. Negative point is what I'm working with. Uh, so doctor, you started these centers years ago in the 90s and you started uh, them going. At that time, the awareness may have been way less than what it is today. So when you started this, are there some initial stories that you have or anecdotes which made you or motivated you to believe that you are in the right direction? No, the, the fact that, the, see, if I wasn't, I wouldn't grow. See, the, I, when I started it, the, the age of, ref, I tell you my motivation, age of referral by pediatrician used to be five years and six years. Very little I could do for the children. You know, but today I have some pediatricians who over nine months will say, go to, in, in Bangalore, they'll say, something is wrong with your child. Go, just go and see Dr. Nandini. You know, I mean, they would say that, they say that your child, see, the, I mean, what is the beautiful thing? You, convincing the parents, you know, from that age for them to, even the, I think my colleagues are also making a big difference. They are, they are also working on it. But it would be nice. I still have only... I feel very sad that all pediatricians are not monitoring the milestones or the parents are also not paying attention to this. See, the only milestones they are very concerned about, which is most useless milestone is a gross motor. I mean, useless in the sense, it doesn't help you to learn. Like sitting, standing, walking, because it's visible to them. If a child doesn't walk by one and a half years, they go running to the pediatrician. But what is the most important milestone to monitor is the social milestone. Child who doesn't make an eye contact, doesn't look at, give you a back and forth smile, doesn't have a, a you know, share a joy with you and say, Daddy, Baba, look, you know, a mama, or point to a thing. See, these are crucial for learning. They want them to, I see, academics has got so much importance in our country. That is the, if a child is good in school, means he's good in everything else. Not so. 
today I have parents, I mean, I sorry if I, because I talk, I had other day one 17 year old child with autism, the parents came to me, all the from pretty far off. As he says, my child is doing excellent in school, but doctor, he doesn't go out of the house. He doesn't have a single friend. All that time he's known. How do I do solve this? See, it is the socialization which should be addressed in these children, which is not understood so well by the and that's the greatest problem it's a social they don't monitor social milestones they don't monitor communication milestones if you don't monitor these two you can't pick up children with autism and all early so this is i i still i mean would want i wish pediatricians would monitor social and communication milestones you know rather than just the physical alone or when the parents when parents come with a problem, we should give utmost importance because when they notice itself means something must be grossly wrong or they're comparing it to another child they have or seen in some way and they're saying child something is not doing well. I wish this is my request actually if you can project it to all the pediatricians across the country that please monitor social communication milestones right from birth and to do this I even developed an app it's, you know, I mean, that's another story. You have to come to you to say that how people make a difference in your life when you're working, as you said, as I mean, we were working in these centers. Uh, I, I told you again and again, I can't do this alone. Like how Savita came into my life. There's another wonderful lady called who runs the parent mediated center in Sahakar Nagar, which we have, which is one of the best PN mediated centers in this country, is by another very good educationist who came with a child with a special need to me, it was so severely affected. I told her, I don't think I can do anything. Like a four-year-old child came, almost she carried him like this in two arms, you know. So she said, no, but even then, this is the last place I've come. You have to do something. This is my son. So I said, okay. Then I called my therapist. I said, at least let's give a stable breathing to this child. He was not even able to breathe. You know, this child bloomed to an extent I would say he would start recognizing. If you say, Dr. Nandini is coming, she'll say, Mother will say, he'll give me a smile. Then she came one day to me and said, Doctor, I have a small desire. I said, What is it? Can I do? She says, I know my child can never go to a school, can never, but is it possible that I am an MSc, MED? She had such a lot of qualification. You can use me to start something by which she can. I said, amazing. What are you wasting your time? I said, do a course in autism with me. And she started the center in Saka Naga. It's called Sangamitra, Early Intervention Center, with just two children. And she said, I will take my son there. I'll take a help who we'll look after it, not interfere with my work. But when the child has, they have lunch together, I want my child to be with the other children. What a beautiful, brilliant way. You know? And that's how now that center is got every program on that earth you know i mean i'll send you an initiative they have music therapy the art therapy they have toilet training the sexual development program they have early intervention they have just for severely and moderately retarded started they have started a pre-vocational training they have an open school curriculum when the school where children can't go to so they have a sibling you know we are also aware siblings of another child a normal neurotypical sibling also feels so lost because the parent, they feel they don't have enough attention. They get into So we have every program now, A to Z. It was all because of my colleagues also who work with me, you know. My admins who, who handle everything, Saraswati and Vajanti, you know. They are there for the, I mean, it's like a, it's a teamwork, I should say. It's not you alone. I'm not alone in this. And these people are as dedicated, or I would say even more than me, to bring about this change in these children.